Hey everybody, welcome to Loven Stamps. Uh, this is the Makeup Mornings with Meg, and I'm Meg from the Loven Stamp Studio. So episode 400, hey, that's a pretty big number. I'm excited to share a project with you guys, shocker there, and uh, to kind of just celebrate how fun it has been to present these videos to you guys over the last 400 episodes and uh, just really have our you know fun community that's developed and, and so forth. So yay, so thank you guys for all being part of that. Make sure you say hi and where you're commenting from and um, near, far, wherever you are. <laughs> uh, the project that I am going to show you today features the Autumn Leaves stamp set and Oh goodness, Facebook always changing the things here. Let's see what's going on. Uh, anyway, oh, there we go. Okay, uh, so the project is going to feature the Autumn Leaves stamp set, which makes me sing um, sort of in my head that little jazz song. All these autumn leaves be go past my window. Uh, my son plays the trombone and he sang that song and played trombone sort of a la Chet Baker style for a recent um, event at our high school. It was really, really fun. So it's, it's you know, those connections, right? Uh, so the stamp set is beautiful. It is really amazing with the dies. I've showed you some projects with that already. And uh, today's project is one that features a really fun fold. And it was actually shown to me originally by uh, Linda Yearsley, who is a demonstrator in my Love and Samples group. She is amazingly talented. And it is a lattice fold card. So this is a more than I would usually do because I am a simple stamper for the most part. Um, I like things that are fairly quick. This one's a little bit fussier, but it is worth it. So I think you guys are gonna really enjoy this special 400th episode. And uh, I will, at the end, I'll show you Linda's card too. Um, but I'm going to show you the version that we're going to make uh, with our fall themed items. So we are switching to very vanilla for the for the fall time. And uh, I'm going to show you some of the great things about this suite of products. So um, right now you can't order the All About Autumn Sweet collection because there are, I think, a couple things um, on back order from it. But um, you can get the stamps and dies, no problem. Um, I'm going to show you some um, other cool alternates, and this does not require that um, designer series paper, uh, so no big deal there. Um, you're really going to love this one. All right, with that, let me switch our camera, and we can get started. So, oh, hey, hi, Kayla and Kelly and Becky, and it's actually Friday. I know, Kelly. Kelly coined our term happy pre-Friday. Usually we meet on Thursdays. Um, thank you for your patience. We had a little um, a little um, mishap yesterday, so I uh, couldn't meet live, but um, I'm excited to see you guys live today instead. So it is actually Friday. So happy Friday, everyone. All right, so card base for this. This is very vanilla. Um, it might look a little yellow in the um, camera. It's a little tricky to get exactly right on the camera with this, um, but it is not yellow. It is very pretty vanilla. And this is the thick card stock, which we're gonna use for the card base. Make sure you score um, with this card stock. You don't wanna just fold um, without scoring. And then we're going to use it for our card um, base too, the layer that we're gonna do our lattice work on. And this um, sample is just gonna be a little different from the way Linda did hers, um, just to mix it up a little. Uh, but this, you really want to be thick cardstock because you're gonna have a fair amount of force on it from these strips. Um, these, incidentally, are regular vanilla cardstock so that they fold nice and cleanly. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and use thick though for the background. Now. First things first, you've probably already seen, I have my Distress Tile 3D embossing folder, which is super fantastic. And I'm gonna take this piece of cardstock and run it through my folder, um, through my stamp and cut and emboss machine, and the result is this absolutely gorgeous tile. This um, tile folder is in the annual catalog if you're looking for it, um, it's in the big book. So uh, it's fantastic and the link is in the video, I think it's a pinned comment right now, um, the link to stamping supplies for this. So uh, I appreciate your support and your orders. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and work on this. Now, 
For the lattice, I have sort of a, um, a trick for doing this. I'm gonna use this piece, which is the same size. This is actually cut to four inches by five and a quarter. I'm gonna use this as a spacer, okay? I'm gonna bring this in later, so we'll get there. So what I'm gonna do is take my half inch strips and I'm gonna start layering them on a corner. I wanna make sure it's inside this corner here. And then I'm going to do the next corner. Oh, Kayla says it's Saturday in uh, Australia. That's so fun. I love that we can have community together all over the world, literally. It's not even the same day there. Huh. So I guess when I say happy Friday, usually, or happy pre-Friday, you're already celebrating um, the actual Friday there in Australia. Uh, that's kind of funny. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about weaving. Um, that is just too complicated at the moment. We're going to make that much easier for ourselves. Um, but I am going to get all of these relatively set here, okay? So what I'm looking at is I'm looking at spacing between the, the lattice pieces. I'm looking to make sure that they are right inside our corners here and here. And when I have that set, I'm happy. I'm going to take a piece of washi tape and I'm going to make this even easier for myself by going across there and across here so that I have all the pieces with a little bit of tape on them, okay? Now, um, what I am, let's see, I'm doing this a little differently than I did before. I guess I don't need to use this as a space or I could have just used my regular piece. All right, so not to worry. I have a trick for like flipping it over and stuff. That's probably still helpful, so. I'd stick with the washi tape. All right, so I'm gonna get this back on here, ugh, back on here uh, so that it fits at the corners, okay? My washi tape's gonna keep that from shifting too much, and then I'm gonna flip this to the back side, okay? And now I am going to take my bone folder, and I'm just going to run across the bottom of the line there so that I can fold all of these up. Okay, now this is a place for tear tape or for um, multi-purpose liquid glue, the green lid glue, whatever makes you happy. And I do love the um, this glue. It is definitely what makes me happy. But to be speedy here, um, so we don't have to wait for it to dry, I'm just gonna go ahead and use tear tape. And if you have um, a mostly dislike relationship with that glue, then feel free to use the tear tape method here. Um, my tip with the tear tape, if you have trouble getting the backing off, is to push it down harder. The harder you push it down, the easier it is to separate the backing from the paper. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and flip all those things that I just got there um, all set. Okay, so now we have our pieces folded. I'm gonna turn this back to the front, and we have all these things hanging out the edge, this is where your paper snips come in super handy and you can just clip those away and I'm actually going to kind of undercut it so I don't have to worry too much about getting them straight and by undercut I mean I'm cutting here like this see that undercutting um so that I'm not cutting away my paper but my uh, my actual whoa no, I'm just throwing it all over the place all right so now see our um, washi tape has saved us pretty nicely here so I'm going to go ahead and pull this washi tape off now. You do wanna be a little careful. Um, all washi tape is not created the same and you really don't want it to rip your cardstock. So sometimes it helps to like pre, if your washi tape is really aggressive, um, sometimes it can help to pre-stick it someplace like to your jeans or your, your shorts or something. Just pick up some fibers so that it doesn't um, stick too much too <laughs> too thoroughly. All right, so now we have this thing here that is pretty easy to weave. Um, here's my trick for weaving. Get rid of two on one side. Um, so you're just weaving one. And I'm going to go over, under, over. Okay? All right, see how easy that was? One. Now we're going to bring in the second one. And we're going to go under and over and under. You can do that whichever way you want. Okay, but see how easy this is to bring together? Now, if you have all three and all three and you're trying to weave it, like you're gonna miss something. It's just complicated. So get this baby out of your way and just make it simple for yourself. So I'm gonna do the opposite here. So I'm gonna go under here and then this one is gonna go under there. And now we have a lattice. So dress up your lattice now, get it all pretty and where you want it, okay? 
just like that. Isn't this coming together beautifully? Um, and now I'm gonna flip this to the back side and I'm gonna do that same bone folder trick. Let's see, actually, do I want that overlapped at the top? Maybe I don't care, maybe I'll just leave it. All right, so these two are overlapped right here is kind of what I was talking about. And I'm going to use my bone folder to pop those down. And then let's see, can we cheat it? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cheat. Just folded all those kind of at once. So <clears throat> we just rolled it on around and then I'm going to, for all you um, people who are, who are not in love with multi-purpose liquid glue, you're like, yay, tear tape over again. All right, so we're gonna flip these all down and flip these all down and do a little, actually here I can trim some of this extra here. I can trim some of this extra here. And then I'm gonna just trim from this side to make sure I've gotten rid of any extra little pieces that would be sticking out. And there we have our lattice. I think it was this side at the top. So fun, right? Relatively simple. And you can see why I used um, a thick, the thick white for the background here um, to get just a nice and sturdy base for this. Now, uh, it's cute, but I don't really want it to pop up like that. So I'm just going to take a couple Stampin' Dimensionals and pop them underneath. I'm going to actually put them on the um, back of the uh, woven part there so that I know that they'll still be hidden um, when I peel them. But then I'm going to just press that down and that's going to help our, our card kind of all stay together. All right. Now that is going to get mounted here on our card base, which is just a half sheet of very vanilla thick card stock. Um, but let's work on the front parts that are gonna, gonna make this all beautiful, right? So we have our autumn leaves stamp set and this has great texture. It also has fantastic dyes um, that match it. And so we're gonna use a number of these here. Uh, so I have a piece of, there we go, um, very vanilla cardstock. And I'm gonna do some stamping with this large leaf here. Now, usually I have my stamps all mounted and we're super speedy, but I wanted to um, show you this because I wanted to make sure that I point out this extra um, important trick for this. And then I think we're gonna do um, with a grateful heart, which is kind of a fun thank you message. Um, and gosh, for our Canadian friends, you guys have Thanksgiving coming up next weekend. So uh, that will be here before we realize it. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and mount these by setting my stamp down so that it's in its natural shape and then just picking it up with the block. Um, for something like that greeting or for this leaf here, um, it's really not a big deal. Let's see, does it fit? It is a little small, so let me switch. Now, why does that matter? It matters because you want to, here, I'll show you. So this is an example like over the, literally over the edge. When you have a stamp that doesn't fit on your block like this, you're going to have a problem um, with getting it to stamp nicely on your project. So you wanna make sure that your whole stamp is supported by the block, okay? So we have our large one there. I'm pretty sure that this fits on the smaller block, but the reason that I didn't pre-mount this, I wanted to show you this, is that you um, want to make sure that this um, is the right shape because it has to match this one. So if you mount this on your block and you go here like that, we'll just make it extreme, this clearly is not gonna match, okay? So instead, what I'm gonna do is let it be its normal shape just here on my stamping surface and then pick it up like this. So now I know it's the right shape and it's gonna match our um, two-step stamp right here. So, oh my gosh. Okay, Corinne said that this card would work for a mummy card for Halloween. I thought the same thing, right? Like something like this, and then you could just put two eyes um, on it someplace to peek out. I'm I totally with you, totally with you, Corinne. Uh, thanks, Jerry, I'm glad you like this one. Okay, so let's get back to stamping. Um, yes, we, we should make the Halloween version sometime soon, so. I'm gonna go ahead and ink up my autumn leaves stamp here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp off on scrap paper. And I want this to be a really, really great image. So I'm gonna put my um, paper piercing mat underneath and then go ahead and stamp off once here. 
and then stamp here on my card or my, not my card, but my piece that I'm gonna die cut, okay? So what I'm gonna get is a really nice texture and really great detail. Now, you can stamp just on the regular table surface. The reason that you sometimes want to add this mat underneath, if you think about a red rubber stamp, a red rubber stamp has the red rubber with the image on it, and then it has a layer of foam, and then it has the block, right? The red rubber, the foam, the block. When you have a photopolymer stamp, you just have the, the stamp and the block. There's nothing to give to give in that little sandwich, right? There's nothing to um, help make sure any you know irregularities or surface bubbles on your table or anything like that come through. So if you have trouble with get, getting incomplete images, especially on a larger stamp with photopolymer, add the foam back to, add that give back to the sandwich. And so the paper piercing mat is the perfect um, width or depth and density for that. Uh, so I like to keep it underneath here. So we're gonna use this one more time. We're gonna stamp on our card. Um, when you're using a bigger stamp, I always just march across my ink pad and we're gonna stamp off one more time again. And then I'm gonna stamp here on my project, okay? Now with a bigger block, Remember, it's easier to ink your block. You wanna be careful not to rock so you don't catch that extra ink. Um, you could use your chamois to wipe that off, you know, lots of ways around that. So let's go ahead and use our little veiny stamp now. And I'm gonna use this one full strength. And there we go. And that makes that beautiful um, detail veining in our leaf. So we're gonna do that here on this one. Now the dye is gonna cut most of our stem off. That's not gonna matter. Uh, but we want the rest of that leaf to be very nice there. And then I have a, let's see, I do have a piece here that actually I pre-die cut. So we're gonna, we're gonna just um, use this label. The label is actually from this stamp set too. So we have with a grateful heart here in Pretty Peacock, only one color of ink for this whole project. And then we are going to die cut our leaf. So. Um, remember that washi tape that we had handy? Uh, I'm gonna use it again. And I know you're shocked. I'm actually going to die cut here uh, together. Usually I pre-die cut and I have the pieces ready through the magic of television, but we'll just go ahead and die cut today. Uh, because I wanted to remember to tell you uh, that the mini Stampin' Cut machine, well, you know this thing's really fun, but there is a new um, demonstrator special coming up. It starts October 3rd. Um, if you have thought about getting the demonstrator starter kit, um, this is a really nice time to think about getting um, like some bigger ticket items uh, at a very nice discount. So there's a 35 year anniversary that Stampin' Up! is celebrated. So they're bringing the 35 into their um, into their celebration by saying that you could join the Stampin' Up! Demonstrator family for $35 off or uh, with 35% or 35% off. So it's $35 off um, or 35% extra product in your starter kit. So that's like $168.75 in your kit for $99 and shipping is free. It's a really good deal. You can learn more on my website. There'll be a link in the comments um, when we get wrapped up here. So, all right. So I'm going to set that aside. Uh, I'm going to pull this here. Uh, we need also some die cut leaves. And this, if you saw the little reel that I made about my favorite kinds of die sets, this is one of them. Why is this one of my favorite kinds of die sets? Because it has multiples of all, many of the little pieces in here, especially the ones that you would want in quantity. So that makes this really easy to use, okay? So I have uh, the dies here that match the um, leaf that we just stamped. There we go. Okay, but I also have the veining dies. So you can do this um, like in gold. The gold uh, self-adhesive paper is perfect for that. There are a couple different other leaf shapes. There's this one, which the oak that's not on there. Um, these sort of, mm, I can't remember what these are. So feel free to comment if you're a tree leaf expert. And uh, then though, there are doubles of all these, which are great accents and mean that you only have to um, die cut half the time to get the number of leaves you want. So it's a really uh, great one. Oh, and of course, then it has um, label pieces that match the greetings in the stamp set, but also other um, kinds of things, some cool backgroundy stuff. This is a really robust die set. Stampin' Up! has been knocking it out of the park lately on um, 
these dies and they're super high quality. Uh, they cut beautifully, just really outstanding. So, all right, we have our pieces here and then uh, through the magic of television, I have a piece of copper clay and wild wheat, which I've die cut to make some extra leaves. And there's been a raging discussion on the Loven Stamps Facebook page about um, this uh, particular color, this wild wheat. So if you are a wild wheat fan, man, you better jump on there and uh, defend it. <laughs> and if you're not a wild wheat fan, then you can jump on and disparage it. <laughs> so there's, I don't know, we're probably shooting about 50-50 right now. So um, people love it. People don't love it. I'm fine either way. Uh, it just, that's the beauty of crafting, right? You can make up whatever you want. It's not like you go to buy a bedspread and there's this terrible color in it that you can't stand, right? I actually really like this, but just saying that's the beauty of crafting your own things. All right. So let's arrange all of these fantastic pieces. We're going to have our, um, grateful heart right here. I want to show off this fun, um, background here. So let's go ahead and start popping some Stampin' Dimensionals on some things. Uh, we're gonna use a lot of dimensionals on this card because uh, I love them, but also because there are lots of great texture opportunities here to show off. Um, texture and layering, those subtle shadows, they make a big difference. Um, so we're gonna layer that across there. I have these two leaves. I think we're gonna pop on mm, about like that. So let's get a dimensional on each of them also. And any dimensional stickiness that kind of pops through to the bottom um, will just help to stick our lattice down. So if it's got some motion in it, I'm not, not, ha not unhappy. So there we go. All right, now we need some bling on this card. So I have two things to add. One of them is a little tiny strip. So you get two um, sheets of this paper. This is the self-adhesive paper. Uh, if you use it in tiny quantities like this, it's going to last you a super long time. So feel free to splurge a little more. Um, you can cut the veining for your leaves to go on this. It's very pretty. But our card has um, got a lot going on. So I'm going to go with a more subtle bit here. And the backing paper of this is going to come off. There we go. So we're going to pop this here a little bit underneath our leaf and just run it across the bottom. And I think it's a little bit long, so I'm going to trim the end like that. And then I'm going to show you two different choices. Pardon me, I've turned away from the camera uh, for the embellishments on this. So one is the speckled dots, which are part of the suite. I'll pull them out of the plastic so you can see them. They are very nice. They are not in the online store right at the moment because uh, they are um, super popular, so they're out of stock. They'll be back um, in a little while. But in the meantime, I'm gonna grab these brushed metallic dots, which are also absolutely beautiful and so perfect for this kind of card. So I'm gonna pull, um, I think the gold ones here to match our gold. You could also go with gold sparkle. The um, Festive Pearls have gold sparkle dots, so you could use those. Um, on here, but I'm going to go ahead and pop a couple um, of these uh, on our card to just sort of strengthen our focal point. And then actually, oh, that one just popped right off the edge. Um, I kind of like the way they stand out. Let's see, should I stick that there or do we like it down here better? I actually do want it up here, I think. I'm going to pop it on the blue leaf. Okay, I'll show you a different one. When I did my speckled pearls, I put it here, but my greeting was a little further over. All right, so there's that, um, but I feel like this needs one more thing. I feel like it needs a little bit of, um, a little bit of like texture, linen-y texture, should we say? So I'm gonna bring in linen thread. Um, now, the linen thread now comes on these rolls from Stampin' Up, which is fabulous, because you get tons of it, but when you unroll it, it is unruly and very curly. So here is my trick for straightening it out. All you have to do, Take your thumbnail and your finger and just press your thumbnail into the pad of your finger and just really gently run along that length and it is going to uncurl. So here's the curled version and here's the part we just straightened, all right? You can uncurl it more if you really want it to be straight. I kind of like it to have just a little bit of curly body there, so. All right, oh, I'm missing some. Um, missing chattiness. Oh gosh, I love it. Okay, Becky said that it looks like birch tree leaves, 
Oh, okay. That's fabulous. So there is a leaf reference for you. Um, and Elaine said she loves the two, two step stamp set. I do really love this one. And somebody said you can never have too many leaves in there. <laughs> oh, that was Elaine. Thanks, Elaine. Um, all right. Oh, Patricia, she said wild wheat combines beautifully with gold. I actually haven't done very much of that yet. So I think I'm going to have to, I guess I'm using gold here, um, with wild wheat, but like as a lot of gold, I'm going to have to pull that out. That would be so pretty. And Sue said she really likes blended brush wild wheat. Um, yes, I do too. And if you didn't see it actually, oh, you know what? I guess I am using gold a lot. <laughs> okay, Patricia, I'm right there with you. I like, um, I like gold and, uh, um, what wild wheat too. So this is a card that I showed, uh, last week sometime, or maybe the week before last week, I think. Um, and we used the wild wheat here from the garden walk paper and the gold pearls. These are the gold festive pearls and then our gold paper again. And then here's the blending brush like Sue was talking about right there. Um, so definitely, uh, another fun wild wheat card. And if you are a garden walk fan, um, you probably want to sign up for my Garden Walk class that's coming up. Seven projects. We'll make them all together in a live, uh, couple of live crafting evenings. If you can't make the live crafting evenings, that's okay. You'll be able to watch the videos later um, in an exclusive Facebook group. So those will be private. But you get a whole pack of paper, pearls. Um, the oh, I, oh, those weren't the festive pearls. I thought they were, but they're not. They're the um, blooming pearls. You get a package of envelopes. You get the linen thread. Um, we're going to make seven projects, including that fun, um, the fun little uh, gift card holder. So here's the version that we're going to do. It has like a fun tie on it. Here we go. There's our gift card holder. Uh, and then six cards to go along with it. So um, that's going to be the class. If you want to, you can add on the stamp set and the punch. Um, but look for the information on that on the... Uh, in the comments or on my Love and Stamps website. So, all right, back to our card. We're gonna tie a bow. So this is one of those beautiful things about uh, be able to pause and uh, rewind. So if you need to, you can, but basically um, I'm gonna tie, I call it tying a bow on nothing. So I'm just gonna make the little loop there and pinch it. I'm gonna go, the bunny rabbit goes around the tree and then goes into the hole and then make the bow, so. Okay, so then to make the bow look right, I always make the loops smaller, okay? Uh, sometimes big floppy loops are good, but for the most part, I really like my loops to be um, sort of in, in the size of the project. So I'm gonna pull this in, and now if you thought we were gonna escape with no multi-purpose liquid glue, well, let's see, I'm gonna glue this down to our card first. We're gonna use this twice. We're gonna use it once here to glue down our card base, and so I can get really good um, bond there between the parts of our card. I'll get some glue underneath those since they're popping up everywhere. And our card base, uh, especially when you have something with a really deep texture like this 3D embossing folder, distress tile folder, um, it helps to have a glue that can really get into the nooks and crannies so that you have um, everything um, well stuck down. So here I'll hold this for a second since we're talking. Do, 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 do. Actually, I bet. Um, I can just put some blocks on here. What do you guys use to stick down your stamps when you're, I like to use punches personally. So uh, they're nice and heavy. All right, so now I'm going to put a teeny dot. Instead of putting the glue on my, mm, am I gonna put my glue here? Here, I'm gonna put my glue on my ribbon. That way it can go exactly where I want it to go. There we go, and not anywhere else. And then I'm gonna take this and go ahead and pop it here on my leaf. Now, uh, you wanna give it a second. Multi-purpose liquid glue grabs really hard, but it does not grab instantly. So give it some time to grab. Okay, that's why the blocks are handy. And then um, we're gonna give that one more second before we wave this card around. Uh, Kelly says she really loves the stamp set too. On the next order. Yeah, it's a good one. Uh, all right, so there we have a really pretty and really festive card to um, celebrate our 400th episode. And I promised to show you Linda's and I forgot to grab it, so let me get that here. Uh, Linda's was a summary version because we had our a summer um, event when we did this. And here is 
Linda's summary version. She used the brick folder in the background, I think. Yes, the brick folder, you can kind of see that there. And then she used uh, the die set of which I cannot remember the name right at the moment. But really um, a very similar idea, just uh, the white is nice and crisp and clean for sort of summer, spring, winter kinds of things. I am a sucker for very vanilla in the fall when we have those fall tones um, and the leaves and everything. So yes, absolutely um, beautiful and wonderful, wonderful inspiration. So thank you, Linda. Uh, all right, let's see. I'm going to switch our camera back here. There we go. And I think that is our Friday, our actual Friday, not even pre-Friday. So everyone hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Um, oh, thanks, Elaine. She says, uh, thanks for helping us get through the COVID quarantine with some semblance of, of uh, sanity. Uh, yes, this was something that started, right? This is, this is one of the beautiful things to come out of that crazy time. Uh, so super excited to still be stamping with you guys regularly. And really, it's been so fun to get to know so many of you um, through your comments and, and chatting and um, so forth. So thank you guys for reaching out. Um, I think that we do a lot to support each other, just being together and uh, liking and um, sharing and commenting and um, creating that community. So it's very much appreciated. And uh, yeah, gosh, all over the globe. So happy Saturday if you're in Australia. <laughs> uh, if you have any questions, as always, let me know. Uh, happy to help you. I will go ahead and pop the comments, uh, the extra links in the comments here as soon as we are done. If you are looking on, uh, watching this on YouTube later as part of the YouTube premiere, uh, then you will have all the links in the video description already. Um, let's see. Oh, I had a question. Let's see. Oh, Tanya said she's making the gift card holder. Um, yes, good. I am excited to hear that. Have fun with it. So I hope everyone has a fun weekend that you have great things planned, uh, that you will have a chance to exercise your creativity a little and, uh, mail a card, send a card to someone that you haven't talked to for a little while, spread a little bit of extra joy with uh, the things that you love. We love making the card. I love sharing the cards. We love making the cards. It's fun to send the cards. It's fun to receive the cards. There's there's a whole lot of joy in this whole process. So uh, I'm, I'm a big fan. So happy 400th, everyone. And I will be back on Tuesday with another Maker Mores with Meg episode. So bye, guys. Happy stamping.